Hey what's up and welcome back to the channel this is the Broken Geek and in today's video we need to look at the column and conditions when it comes to designing your columns. What we're saying is we need to see what constitutes the fixed versus a partially fixed versus a pinned versus the free end of a column because this is important because when, whether you are doing hand calculations or designing your columns using software particularly when you're using software there will come sections where they request you to input the column and conditions and in a case where you don't know the difference between a fixed partially fixed or pinned and chances are you are inputting the wrong things and when you input the wrong things you will get the wrong result so what i want to do is help you to know what is right and what exactly is considered a fixed partially fixed pinned and a free end of a column so that whatever you do is correct and your designs will be safe and economical so without wasting too much time let's get right into the content of the video okay so first things first if this is your first time coming to the channel please subscribe and also remember to click on the notifications bell also remember to like and leave a comment on the video so that we get started and we don't want to waste too much time let's dive right into it so today's video is going to be sort of a slideshow presentation but we're also going to be going into program paths for better illustrations or clarity whenever we need to explain a concept so let's go and look at the first thing that we need to look at today which is the fixed end of a column when is a column considered to have a fixed end so the end of a column is considered to be fixed when the end of that column is connected monolithically to beams or slabs that are deeper than the column dimension in the relevant plane so the keywords are it has to be monolithic and the beams or slabs have to be deeper than the column in the relevant plane so to better illustrate this obviously i had an illustration that i've already provided for you as you can see it's already on the screen which is the fixed end and in this case let me just take out my pointer pointer options laser there's a case of monolithic beams and slabs in case you have a conventional slab and the case of monolithic slab alone in case you have a flat slab so yes we have a 300 and 400 column for both cases but i just think the best way for you to understand or for me to illustrate this is to go to pads because i think people understand better when you have colors and you have a black screen in the background okay so now we are in program pads remember license provided by program software consultants and we need to look at the fixed end so there i have it this is why i did the illustration that you saw in the slideshow and as you as you already noticed we have two cases the case of the monolithic beams and the slab and the case of a monolithic slab alone that is when you have a flat slab so if you want to see the different types of slabs i have a video on that link in the description below now one thing that you need let's go to the plan view so in this case as you can see the dashed line represents the slab and the solid yellow lines represent the beams and obviously the blue line since it's going to be a monolithic column it's also dashed just to, to remind you that you don't have a rigid separation between your columns and your beams and your slabs and the only reason why i had those beams in solid and the slabs in dash is just for us to differentiate so this is what you have in plan and also in the case where you have just the slabs this is what you have in plan you have a 300 by 400 column so in, when you try to view it in the x right remember x is the one that is parallel to this line and y is perpendicular to the status bar so when you have the view in the x it's only considered fixed because in this case the column dimension in the x is 300 and your beams are 400 deep so in this case it's definitely fixed and also because it is monolithic so those two conditions are satisfied so this setup is going to be fixed in the x x what about in the y y in this case the dimension of the column in the y y is 400 and the depth of your beams and your slabs is going to be 450 so in this case it's going to be fixed again in both cases just remember you can vary the depth of your beam in either direction so in this case in the x x we have 400 deep beams and in the y y we have 450 deep beams so in this case we are covering both situations and in this case it's going to be fixed what about the case where you have a monolithic slab only in a flat slab so unfortunately with a slab you have to have a uniform thickness throughout so for this to be considered fixed the maximum the depth of the slab has to be bigger than 400 so in this case as you can see it's 425 and in this case when it's viewed in the xx the dimension of the column is 300 and when it's viewed in the yy the dimension of the column is 400 so in this case 425 is greater than the two dimensions so in our case it is definitely fixed 
So hopefully I hope this answers you and remember I'm going to provide the file that is the slideshow the PPT file in the link in the description below so that in case you want to go over through it and just see it again you understand also just remember well, this is a fixed end condition and what we now need to do is go back into the PowerPoint so that we also look at what now constitutes a partially fixed end condition. Okay now we're back in the PPT or PowerPoint and we have seen the fixed end condition so the next thing that we need to do is go to the partially fixed end condition. So an end of a column is going to be considered partially fixed if the end of that column is connected monolithically to the beams or slabs but in this case which are shallower than the overall column dimension in the relevant plane. So without wasting time let's look at what this illustration looks like. So this is what it looks like in PowerPoint but remember I think when we go to program pairs that way that is where you're better able to see the difference because of all the colors. So let's go to program pairs. Okay, so now we are back in program pads and as you can see we have the partially fixed end at the top right there and just like in the fixed end condition we have two cases, case of the monolithic beams and slabs and then we have the case of the monolithic slab only. So the section of the column is still the same, we have a 300 by 400 or a 400 by 300 whatever you want to call it and we have the one that has the monolithic beams and slabs and then we have the flat slab example. Now this one is considered partially fixed why because in both cases as you can see it is monolithic so that guarantees that it is fixed but then when you look at it this one is 300 and the depth of your beam and your slabs is 275 so the beams and the slabs are shallower than the dimension of the column in this case 275 is less than 300 so it then becomes partially fixed and when you view it in the y same scenario in this case the column is 400 but then your beams and your slabs are 300 so in this case again because it is monolithic it is fixed but because they are shallower than the beams and the slabs it becomes partially fixed. Same let's go to where we have the flat slab example. So in the flat slab example when you look at it the column dimension of the slab is going to be 250 thick and remember it's going to be the same whether in the y or in the x but in both cases the dimension of the column becomes larger than that of the slab but the slab is joined monolithically to the columns so by the fact that it is joined monolithically it is fixed by the, by the fact that it is though the slab is shallower than the columns then it becomes partially fixed. So hopefully this answers your question whenever you're looking at your layouts you now know where you have a fixed end and where you have a partially fixed end. So since we're done with this let's go back to the PPT so that we see what then constitutes a pinned end. Okay we are now back in the PPT and as you can see we're looking at the partially fixed end but now we need to look at the pinned end. So the end of a column is going to be considered as pinned when the end of the column is connected to members that provide some nominal restraint but are not monolithic. What are we really trying to say when we have the statement? Now let's just move on to the forward where you see I have a presentation or an illustration for you. In this case I decided to choose a corner column of a building where it has walls but then you're just including columns in there to provide rigidity because if you remember even when you're doing a perimeter wall there's a Jura walls wherever you call them wherever you are. You remember sometimes they put columns because columns are there to provide rigidity to the structure so as to avoid it being weak or jelly-like if you want to say. So in this case it's better to have a column or your brick wall is going to terminate where you have a column and your brick wall is going to terminate with your column instead of having a column into column but then a wall into wall but remember it's going to be more expensive. So this is what is there in the PPT but let's just go to the pads file so that you get a clear illustration because it's going to be colorful as usual. Okay we are back in broken pads and as you can see we have our pinned end. So as you can see we have the corner column the yellow obviously represents the slab and the red by now as you can see this is your brickwork and then the blue obviously is dashed and everything but just you know this is the location of your column where you have your corner column. Now this is the viewing plan obviously the scale is still 150 and now you have the view in the X or the view in the Y. Just remember we also have a guideline there if you are lost. Now if you look at it this is a simply supported slab and I've exaggerated these gaps as you can see where my cursor is between the slab and the column just to indicate that this is not monolithic. So by the fact that it is not monolithic it is not fixed but by the fact that you have a slab on top this is just to try and resist some bit of some moments that come into there. 
and you also have the walls so the walls will provide sort of a lateral restraint obviously in this case of a corner column it's going to be restrained a bit in one direction and restrained a bit in the other direction as well but in the case where the column is at the center and it has a wall on the positive of the y-axis and the negative of the y-axis and also a wall on the positive of the x-axis and and the negative of the x-axis that is going to be fully laterally restrained right it's just some nominal restraint that is provided there but by the fact that it is a monolithic right and this is just some nominal restraint it's not going to resist if you are going to introduce some huge huge moments or even lateral sways into the it might not reduce that is if it is slender so this is why it is then termed as pinned so hopefully now you have an understanding of what a pinned end looks like this is strictly when it is at the column end. In another video, we're going to look at the difference between a fixed uh, and a pinned column when you're looking at the base that goes into the foundation. But that is a video for another day. Just for now, we're looking at the pinned end condition. So that is when it is up to the foundation. So now, I hopefully, you have an idea of what a pinned end is. And what we're going to do is let's go back to the PPT so that we now look at the last condition, which is a free end okay now we're back with the ppt and as you can see we were looking at the pinned end next thing that we need to do is the last but not least the free end so what exactly constitutes the free end of a column well the end of a column is considered free when that end has no lateral or rotational restraint i.e meaning a free end of a cantilever column so normally you get those types when you have drop columns which could be architectural usually provided by architects just to be fancy and just throw you the engineer into a beautiful spasm where you're thinking oh myself how am i how am i going to design this so normally you design that incorporating as a load on the beam that is going to be carrying the drop can't leave a column right so it's not going to be too much you can easily do that uh, in case you want to see this in actual reality what you can do is i don't have the internet right now but go to facebook and check out a guy called craftworks so he's a friend of a friend of mine. Wait, well, does that sound correct? Well, let's just say he hangs out with somebody I hang out with, but I don't hang out with him. Anyways, you know what? This is getting confusing, but you get the drift. Just go to Facebook, check out Craftworks. It's Craft and Works. Just check it out and you will find some of the houses that he provides and you will see a lot of drop columns that he provides. So uh, by the way, I'm not sponsored by him or anything. Just, just I'm just doing this. Just check him out. He's a very good guy. And if you want, let's go to pad so that we can see exactly what this looks like. Okay, so back in pads, as you can see, this is the free end. So the grayed out lines are the bars that will be coming for your beam. So this is a 750 deep beam. It's a very deep beam. Sometimes you need to provide middle layers on top of the bottom and the top layers. In this case, we have two provided two middle layers. Right, as you can see, it's also going to be cantilevered. So it's a very, very tricky beam. So this will be a tricky design if you have to ever design something that is this tricky. And as you can see, some of you may be asking me, what about this end? Is it fixed or is it pinned? In this case, I'll just tell you it's fixed. And this will give you a hint as to what a column is fixed pinned whenever it comes into the foundation. So in this case, it's anchored into the beam at this substantial anchorage. So it is fixed. And the view and elevation, this is basically it. And as you can see, this is where you have a free end. And this is a cantilever drop column in this case it's 400 so this is going to be sufficiently held in the beam so hopefully by now you now understand what is the difference between a free end and everything else so thank you again for watching it if it's your first time please subscribe leave a like on the video leave a comment and sorry i've started ranting on so until next time stay safe and don't sneeze